business owner, if you are a entrepreneur, if you are a fellow network marketer, then this is definitely for you because every single one of those things is all about leading people. So guys, we, in what we do, so much of our success is based on our leadership, right? What does John Max, uh, what does he say? He says everything rises and falls on leadership. So um, it, I was so very blessed this past weekend, we got to spend some time with a leadership guru, Mr. John Addison, and he had just released a book, Nine Simple Practices for Leading and Living with Purpose. His book is called Real Leadership, and I'm gonna roll with you guys a couple of the tips that he had shared with myself and the group that we had with him. So if you feel that this, that this might be for somebody that you know, definitely feel free to share and let's get them on with us. If you are on Paris, there are nine tips. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The first one is to number one, first and foremost, decide who you are. You know, we live in a day and age where we're surrounded by, we are bombarded with fake people in the media, people doing this, people doing that, and it's so easy to kind of get lost in the shuffle. I remember, you know, I, uh, I grew up in California, and then I ended up moving up to Oregon for my high school years, and I'll tell you guys, I was like a fish out of water, because I here I was, city girl, in the mix, loving business, loving, you know, just the pursuit of success, and I moved into a very rural part of the country, and it was so very strange, and I remember coming out of high school thinking, who the heck am I? You know, am I this girl? Am I that girl? Where do I fit in in the world? And you know what I realized is the best, the best place to be is you just be yourself. You be the best you that you are. You can't be all things to all people, but you can be you. And you can go all out being yourself with, you know, the, the gifts that God has given you. If you're funny, be funny. If you're serious, be serious. If you're smart, get into your books and, you know, get into the intellect. Whoever you are, whatever the call you have on your life is, be that and be it to the full. Because you will never be anybody else wonderfully. You can only be you amazingly. So number one is decide who you are. Number two is to let your light shine on others. You know, when, when John shared this, I, I so appreciated it because it goes right in line with a foundational principle that we have like built into the culture of our organization. And you know, it's all based out of Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before men so others may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. You know, just really being a light into the world. You know, if you ever see me wear this, that's what this stands for. It stands for being a light to the world because we're in a day and age where people are constantly bombarded with the, you know, constantly negative news, right? Our CNN or they're just surrounded by a lot of negativity and we have the opportunity. I mean, we can choose who we want to be, right? We have the opportunity to, to be an encourager, right? To really share the good news that, that there is something more, that anything is possible, right? And so um, I'm all for being a light. And when he, sh when he shared that, I was like, hey, awesome. We're doing that anyways. That's great. Next so one is to build on your strengths. And I think that is so very important. Um, you know, there's been all kinds of philosophies on this subject, right? Some people say, okay, you have all these things that you need to do in your business. Should you work on your weaknesses and you know you're strong in other areas? Or, or should you do the opposite? Work on your strengths and help fill in the gaps in those other areas. And you know, th these two have kind of been battling, let's just say these philosophies, battling for the last five, 10 years, a while, right? And you know, I totally believe in this, build on your strengths. You know, sometimes when you think about who you are, some people are very organized. Some people are not organized, but they're outgoing people persons, right? Some people are very intellectual, but connecting with others is maybe a little more challenging. There's all different kinds of people. And when they said, you know, be the best you that you can be, build on your strengths, I think that is absolutely awesome. Whatever you are good at, focus on it and get better at it, right? Focus on it 100% and decide, hey, you know what? If I am, if on a scale of one to 10, I'm already at eight and a half, how about I really put some focused energy and I go, you know, I get that up to a 10. Why take something that, you know, we don't like, that we kind of like stink at, right? <laughs> and, and focus a lot of energy on there. It's draining for us, but you know, 
when we get that up, we're only still mediocre, right? So really focusing on our strengths, focusing on the gifts that God has given us to make them better, right? So that is number three. Number four is to earn your position. You know, John Maxwell talks about in his five levels of leadership book um, that the lowest, like the first level of leadership is a leadership by position, right? It's like you have a title, you are a manager, you are a this. And so, you know, it, it's something that it hasn't really been earned. It's just been given to you. And typically people don't really in their heart respect that form of leadership, right? So he talks about, Addison talks about earn your position. That is earn the leadership that you that you want to become, right? You want to lead a team of thousands, be a person, have the character uh, of that, you know, earn the position, really do everything that it takes. It takes serving, right? It takes a person of character. It takes a person of their word, right? It takes a person that does business with honor and integrity. It takes all of those things to earn your position. So those are the first four Number tips. Five, you want to focus on what you can control. You know, so many times there are people who they have all of these things that come at them in life, right? They have distractions. They have, um, issues that come up, right? And they spend a lot of time focusing on all the other things that they have zero control over. You know, what's a fantastic example of this? If you are like myself, a fellow network marketer, and you're building a business, you know, so many times people focus on other people. What's the prospect going to do? What's your team going to do? What's your leadership going to do? What are all these other people going to do, right? Well, honestly, we don't have control over that. The only person we have control over is ourselves, right? <laughs> so, you know, what are the things that we can control and focusing in on those things? That's so very important. So that is number five. Number six is to develop a peaceful core. You know... If you're setting out to do anything, anything adventurous, anything wild, anything crazy, anything worth value in your life, you're going to get some struggles. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, I've seen my fair share. I know you have too. So you're going to get some struggles. So developing a peaceful core, man, that's empower that is so powerful because you may have the ups, you may have the downs, but at the center of everything, if you know deep down in your heart, that, you know, it's going to be all right. You know, there's a saying in the Bible that says, all things work together for the good of those who love you, those who've been called according to your purpose. All things. And sometimes when all hell is breaking loose, you need to remember that all things work for your benefit, right? And so developing a peaceful core is so, so very powerful. Number seven of his nine tips is to be a lighthouse. You know, he talks about how many times there's leaders that they're not really a lighthouse. They're kind of more like a weather vane, like they kind of blow with the wind, right? They move around, but that's not how true leaders are. True leaders are, they're solid as a rock. They're there, they're planted, they're not moving. When the storms of life are coming, that's really when you need your lighthouse, right? That's really when you need a leader that is planted, firm, and they know who they are. They know their plan and their purpose in this earth right? That's what the whole purpose of a lighthouse is, is the lights are on when the storms are rolling, when the fog is rolling in, not for the bright sunny days, not when everything is good. You know, one of my favorite sayings is by a guy by the name of J uh, Benjamin Israeli. Benjamin Israeli says, nothing can resist the human will that will stake even its existence on the extent of its purpose. I love that. I have heard that many times in my mind. I think it's so very powerful because, you know, how often do people just get, I don't know, they're wishy-washy, right? They don't stand for anything. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. So I'm a firm believer in standing up for what you believe, going up for 100%. And you know what? You might get some arrows thrown at you and that's okay. That's okay because you're going someplace and you have a plan and a purpose in your life. That is number seven. Let's go to number eight. Number eight in his nine is don't burn bridges. My goodness, that is good. Don't burn bridges. Well, how many times have you met somebody that they do the opposite, right? Something gets rough. They have something they just 
I don't know. They, they, they don't focus on a win-win situation. They just focus on the here and now. And then later on, a year, two years, three years, five years, ten years down the road, they can't even reconnect with that person. They can't even reconnect with that relationship because they burned the bridge. You know, I have seen that happen time and time again. And I'm a firm believer in if you're going to part company with someone, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's indifferent, do it on good terms. The best example that I know of this is if you are building a business, you have a traditional business, you have a network marketing business. At some point, at some time, somebody in your team, somebody in your organization is going to decide that the grass is greener on the other side somewhere. Okay. And here's what I know is how you respond to that situation is going to clearly display your leadership. What do I mean by that? I have seen people who someone wants to leave, someone wants to go someplace else, right? And that leader gets negative, they get nasty, they, they're just downright ugly with that person. And you know what? That's a fantastic way to burn a bridge. Here's what, and I've had that done to me, it really sticks, I'll tell you that. But here's what, what we do and here's what I've seen to be much more serving for you and your family is if somebody's going to decide to part ways, you're building your business, you're, you're in it to win it, you're rolling and they decide, Hey, this isn't for them or Hey, they're going over here because the grass is greener, whatever the case may be. Love on them. Say, you know what? I value you first and foremost as a friend. We'll always be friends. No matter what happens, I wish you the very best of success. And should anything change, we welcome you back with open arms. And you know what you may find, is that you have a couple boomerang kids. <laughs> they go thinking something is better someplace else and they end up coming on back because they realize that everything that they needed was right there with you and the only X factor on them succeeding or not succeeding was actually them. And so, you know, don't burn bridges is so, so very powerful. Number nine, his last tip of the nine tips is to make your parents proud. You know, there's nothing better than to live your life in such a way that is going to, to bring a smile to your parents' face, right? To, to let them know that whatever you did, you did it with honor, you did it with integrity, you did it in a way that, you know, that helps some people along the way. So I love that tip. Number nine, make your parents proud. Those are the nine tips that John Addison shared with me as I had the opportunity to spend some time with him this weekend. I hope this added some value to you. One final thing is if we haven't met personally, I would love to connect with you and to hear your story. So send me a private message and, uh, and let's talk. That's all for tonight. Take care. Be blessed.